Hello, my YouTube friends. I hope everybody is doing awesome today. You know, most folks out there live stream with a webcam. I mean, let's face it, they're cheap and really easy to set up, but they usually don't look all that great right out of the box. But that doesn't mean they can't look amazing with a little work. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make any webcam look good for your live stream. Not only that, but I wanna show you how you can make sure that OBS keeps your settings every time you open it, so you don't have to you know, mess around with the settings every time to get it look just right. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments down below. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. Before we get into the camera, we need to take a second to talk about lighting. It's really important that you think about how you're gonna light yourself so you can get the best picture quality from any camera. You definitely wanna be sure that you, as the subject, are well lit and that doesn't mean you need to spend a lot of money now I use these lights from Home Depot for a long time and they work just fine but you don't have any control with them basically you just plug them in and they're on or off these days I'm using these lights they're Viltrox VL 200 T's and they come with three lights all the power supplies the stands the remote control and even a carrying case if you want to take them on the road and they cost around 200 bucks. You can also get something like this. This is the Aperture ALM9. It's easy to put just about anywhere and it's battery powered but you can also plug it in and it costs around 50 bucks. You can check any of these lighting solutions out through the link in the description but just be sure whatever you use that you as the subject are well lit before you start to adjust your webcam settings. So here we are in OBS and this is my D DSLR camera. It's the one I use every single day and I'm gonna kind of make sure that this is always up here so you can compare what a DSLR looks like to what you're gonna get with average results on a webcam and it's a huge difference but sometimes you got to work with what you have and I know that's the way it is. So let me show you how to make your webcam look as good as possible. And first we're gonna go here and we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna go ahead and add our webcam in with video capture device and this is just a generic webcam that I have. It's not any name brand or anything like that. It's probably about the cheapest one you can buy. And I have two of them here. We're gonna go with this USB Live camera. It's about the equivalent to the HP cameras that are out there right now, which are pretty much the most popular. It would be like a generic version of that. Let's move this over. And if you look here, it doesn't actually look horrifyingly bad, comparatively speaking. But first problem is the aspect ratio so we're going to select custom here we're going to go into our resolution and we're going to select 1920 by 1080 you might have 4k you may not you can see that this makes this full screen let's go ahead and take a look at how we can fix this you're going to want to go down and select obviously your audio device I use my CamLink audio device for this that's just where it's at and you might actually be able to hear my camera clicking um, we're gonna select our frames per second. This one only does 30 frames per second. Your might, yours might do 60 or whatever. I generally only stream at about 30 frames per second because I don't stream games or anything like that. So the 30 frames per second is fine for me. And you can see when I move my hands and stuff, we're not having any problems with it going, you know, really being choppy or anything like that. Now, if I go like this, it will focus on my hand. You can see it's auto focusing, which is definitely not what we want from our webcam. We don't want it to constantly be focusing and that sort of stuff. So I'll show you how to fix that in a second. As far as video format, you can experiment with either of these if you have any extras in there. Uh, JMPEG just means it's gonna create a series of MPEGs and you know your machine will just stream it that way. Um, as far as color space goes, you have a couple of different selections here. You can choose which one works works best for you. You can see it does pause for a second when we're doing that before it comes on. Just see which one of these looks proper to you. There we go. And it's still doing that autofocus thing, which is really annoying. You can go into color range and it has partial and full. I generally recommend full just because you want the entire color palette. And once it resets itself, there we go. So we're still getting that autofocus thing. 
which is super annoying. But I'll show you how to fix that in a second. You can flip it. The rest of this is just like a, your standard camera. So you, you'll, uh, you don't really generally need to change anything down there at all. Let's just click OK. Now you can obviously see there's a huge difference here between what I'm getting right here and what I have up there. Um, just from a framing perspective, this has a much wider lens than the one I'm using on my DSLR. And I would never probably live stream with this. So I'm just going to crop this up. And to do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt key I'm gonna select the frame hold down the alt key and just go ahead and drag it so we get about the same framing as what I always use and so there we go and we'll frame that up and that's about the same and now I just need to place it into my scene here now you can obviously see one problem with reframing, you know, like I'm doing right now, is that it's a much lower resolution already. And you may not want to do that. I mean, ideally, if I go to transform and I just reset the transform, using it like this gives me a much more resolution picture, especially since I'm not using a 4K camera. But generally speaking, you're probably not going to have your webcam in your full screen anyways. It's just not a great idea. These things just don't look that good. But uh, I'm just going to leave it framed like this because I want to make sure that if you're using Using yours full frame that's the way it's gonna be but you do notice that we're getting you know a little bit of graininess around the edges and that's because of lighting webcams just don't handle lighting all that great you want to make sure that you as the subject are as well lit as possible which in my case I'm pretty much lit for my DSLR which handles light a lot better if I adjusted the lights I could probably lighten me up but I'm never really gonna try to bump up my lights in the background just because you want a darker background and so sometimes you're still going to get a little bit of this haziness back here. It's kind of the way it is. So you can crop your image up if you choose to. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm probably just going to leave it so I can show you. But I could also crop it like this if I wanted to. But you can see we're still getting the same kind of graininess when we adjust the image size. So it's up to you as to whether you would want to do that or not. Some people have a much larger space to film in than I do. So you could probably get away with it. Personally, I really don't like how much I'm seeing in the background but it is what it is so in order to fix that autofocus problem and adjust our camera so it looks good what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on webcam and we're gonna go back into these properties here now if I go into properties I can click configure video right here and this allows me to adjust a lot of the different settings in the video so that we don't get all of the stuff that's happening right now now I don't really recommend going into these properties and adjusting these too much and i'll tell you why because every time you restart this camera or you restart your computer these stupid settings are going to reset and you're going to have to come back in here and tweak it all the time so i'm just going to show you how to set up your filters so that it looks the way you want it to look without having to go in here and poke around um, but i do want to go into camera control and i want to turn off this autofocus and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make sure that i am in focus and set it up and if i have to go in here every time i reboot the computer and just uncheck the focus that's fine we can live with that uh, I'm just gonna apply that and I'm gonna close it and the reason why I'm not gonna mess around with any of those settings anymore is like I said when you reboot your machine it's gonna reset them anyways so why do it there when we can set it up a different way uh, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK and I'm gonna right click on my webcam and we're gonna go into filters and I want to go ahead and give us the bigger view here. I'm going to click on the plus and we're going to go to our color correction and click OK. Now, every webcam is different. Your colors may be really, really off. My colors don't look actually too terribly bad. I'm not really upset with it. But if you had some color problems, you know, you can adjust your saturation and your hue in here to try to get it to where you want it. I definitely like to dial it down. Not, I don't want to look black and white or anything like that, but I don't need a lot of saturation generally speaking I'll try to make it look as natural as I can I'm naturally kind of more reddish apparently anyways we can adjust our brightness right here as well and mine is not too bad the way it is normally so I'm gonna just put it right there in the center gamma will adjust kind of the white balance so depending if you want to brighten it up or darken it up but it works a little bit different than the brightness feature I, I kind of like how this works easier in the brightness feature and then we can add a little bit of contrast into our image which can look really good I mean really that doesn't look all that much different <laughs> from a bright brightness and contrast perspective than that I mean I look naturally the 
way I'm supposed to look. So that's not bad. The only real major problem that we have is that this image is grainy around the edges. But when you adjust it through your filters like that, it's going to save it every single time. So when you come back in, it's gonna be correct. So that's definitely the way that you wanna adjust the way that your image looks is through this color correction piece. And you can also go in here and you can sharpen your image as well. So I could make it sharper. Now you can see this kind of adds a weird grainy thing to it. I don't really care for it. So, you know, I might bump the sharpness up just a hair, but not much. Now the one key aspect to making your webcam look better than it should, let me show you what I would normally do here. I would normally crop this image. So I'm just gonna hold down my Alt key and I'm gonna crop this up to the exact same kind of way that my regular image is cropped. So that's pretty close to the size of my regular image. If you take a look, it actually looks pretty similar. I could probably even dial it in more. Now, of course, when you look at my DSLR image, we've got a lot more, you know, blurriness of the background, that depth of field look that everyone wants. Whereas in the webcam image, it's all clear. Everything is totally in focus. And that's kind of just the way that it is. There's not much you can do about it. A webcam just doesn't have the same open aperture to be able to adjust the depth of field and focus on one spot. So you're not gonna have an easy time getting to that. If that's what you're going for, you're gonna wanna get a DSLR. With that being said, this is a very, very usable image compared to where we started from. And what I would generally do is probably just use an overlay so that I don't have to have this um, zoomed in in full screen where it really points out how bad the resolution is. Now, I wouldn't. it wouldn't be so bad if I had a 4K camera, of course, but I don't. I have a 1080 camera and most folks are going to be working with the bare minimum some people might be working with 780 camera so the moral of the story here is make sure that your background fits properly in the camera's viewport but also don't zoom in your camera because you're just asking for trouble so when we go and the smaller I make this the better more clear it looks the less we get the graininess in the background and that's a good rule of thumb so what I would probably do here is I would go and let's see we're gonna add a media source to this let's say overlay and I'm gonna go ahead and grab an overlay and we're gonna loop it because it is animated and there we go so now we have an overlay that gives us a webcam frame so that we can put our webcam in here without really having too much of a problem and I'd probably crop it up a little bit more crop a little bit on the top push it up here crop it a little bit more on the bottom push it up here and there we go so now I don't have to worry about resizing it so it's bigger or smaller or, or the background is not going to look good. Now we've pretty much got it set up so that it is the proper size for our stream and we're good to go. Now I really wouldn't recommend using a 4K camera unless you need it or you're going to crop it significantly and the reason why is because that's just more processing power that your computer needs. The smaller that you can make your screen like what I did here, the better off you're going to be. You know, so so over here on this side, I would probably put the chat in there and quality channels. Might be promos for sponsors or something like that. If you're interested in learning how to create overlays like this, or possibly you want to know how to make that sponsor scroll type thing, well, I have those videos. You can check them out right here. The more you play with OBS filters and settings, the more comfortable you're going to become with the software. I really want to encourage you to experiment and don't be afraid to try different things. It's how you're going to learn and eventually be able to get some really professional looking results with any equipment that you own. Now, if you're getting audio echo or delay problems in your live streams, you can check this video out and it's going to help you find the problem. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.